I'm Susan Aker, I'm the Chief Executive in East Kent and I'm standing in the emergency department at the Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother Hospital in Margate and I'm here with Jo Williams. Jo, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Jo, I am the ED matron at QQM uh, emergency department. Now, it's International Nurses Day, Mm -hmm. so um, I really actually wanted to talk a little bit about um, you, Jo, and what what inspired you to to become a nurse, but I have to say I've got to start with, you know, the last couple of months and what a a strange and, uh, well, tragic but Mm. also inspiring time it's been. So just just tell us a bit about what you've been doing in the last couple of months around COVID. So we originally started um, having to make adaptations within the department back in January with the kind of COVID swabbing. It was all very new, nobody really knew much about it. Um, And this has probably been the most challenging thing in my career Mm. to look at, you know, the complete change in the department. So we've had to split the department in two. So we kind of run in two EDs at the same time. So we've split it into COVID and non-COVID. Um, and managing that has been a challenge because we've kind of had to look at different ways of working, working with different professionals on a regular basis. So having the intensive care doctors come down and the ODPs, thinking about how they work and how we can make the environment as most comfortable for them, coming down out of their comfort zone to make as much safe practice. Mm. So there's been so many changes that we've had to make, but very quickly. So you're, you're the leader of this department, you're the matron. Mm-hmm. How did you prepare your staff? This has got to be the biggest thing they've changed. How did you prepare them? Absolutely. So good communication has been the absolute key and consistency in the communication. And that's one thing that's really nice that's come out of this is how we communicate. Mm. So we have multiple um, WhatsApp groups. We've prepared videos. So if we've made a change, we've filmed it, we've talked it through and we've put it out on a WhatsApp Mm. group for people to see a visual of it. Uh, We've set up webinars every week where we call it Happy to Help. We go through any changes, any concerns. It's very informal, but people have a voice. They can ask questions. must have been a very, very anxious time for them, particularly in the preparation and the waiting for the first COVID patients to Absolutely, and anxious. I was anxious. I think Mm. we had to take on board how people were worrying if they had underlying health conditions, if they had to move out of their homes, if their family had an underlying health Mm. condition people with children, people when the schools closed, um, how they were going to manage getting to work, managing childcare. So it's been, we've had to have strong leadership because we've had to manage everybody's anxieties and actually there was a job to do. We did have to prepare and I think having processes, planning and preparing brings calm with it and I think if you can give good communication, say this is the process, this is what we're going to do, this is the rationale behind it, you get people on board and actually that does ease people's anxieties. You must be very proud of how your staff have responded in the end. So I I don't think I could work with a better team. This team here have been phenomenal Um, and we talk about you know being proud to be a nurse. I have never ever felt prouder to be a nurse and to work with the team that we've got. They're just fantastic. Yeah, I think I think this must be the most challenging time any of us have faced, really, but particularly you as a nurse on the front line and as a leader in the, any department. But equally, I don't think every, people have ever been more grateful for and, and having so much acknowledgement and recognition for what you do. Yeah, d- definitely. And I think I've always been proud to say I'm a nurse. And, I, you know, when, when someone says, what do you do? And people say, oh, you're a nurse. But now it's that real recognition of NHS staff and what service the NHS actually does provide Mm. it's always been phenomenal it's just that it's been more recognized now how phenomenal the services that we can provide for people so what made you become a nurse Jo so I've always wanted to be a nurse from being really really young Um, I can remember when I was 12 I got a paper round and me and my friend did it together and one of the people we delivered to was a, a lady in the 90s and we we ended up becoming doing jobs for her, we delivered shopping, we used to take her to the fish shop and I think that kind of wanting to help and care just kind of went on and on and I've got it in my record of achievement from year 10 at school, what do you want to do and in there is written I want to be an A&E nurse. You're very very lucky to be so clear in terms of what you wanted to do and then actually to be able to you know live your dream and, and do what you wanted to do. Yeah. When you actually started to, perhaps when you started your nursing as a student or in your early career, was there somebody who really inspired you? 
Yeah, so I, I was really lucky. I, I did my nurse training at Bradford Royal Infirmary and all of the nurses I met were very inspiring. I had excellent nurse training. Um, and my first ever matron, she was extremely professional, but she was always visible. And even now, she's somebody who I remember. She was clinically credible, she was a hard worker, but she was very professional. And so she is somebody I would have inspired, actually. That's how I would like to be portrayed as a matron mm. into my staff. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. And in terms of if, if people are listening to that and they're you know, and their, their, their children or their friends are thinking about becoming a nurse, what would you say are some of the things that are absolutely fantastic about being a nurse? I think the job satisfaction that you feel from a nurse and the, the team that you work with is so unique. It's like no other. I don't think I could get the job satisfaction and that feeling of, wow, I've made a difference today from anything else. Um, you, you know, you feel united as a team. We all work really well together through good times and through bad. Um, but it is a job that it, it's a special kind of person that needs to go into nursing. Um, but it is so rewarding. And there's so many career pathways for nurses now. Mm. It, you know, there is so many advanced practice for nurses. The departments can be very nurse led, the initiatives that you can take forward. You know, I've been lucky enough to do my nurse practitioner training. I feel highly skilled, but yet I've been able to go into the matron job and develop my leadership role. So there's just so many pathways that you can go into within nursing. I always say when people are thinking of a career, or when I say on the induction day, actually, to all of the people in the room, you would be able to work anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country. The as you say, the variety yeah. of, of career paths you can follow mm-hmm. is phenomenal and tremendous. You certainly won't ever be out of work oh, no, you know, no. a, as a nurse. And obviously you, you, you come from Huddersfield and you worked at Bradford? So I've worked at Bradford, yep, I, where I trained. I've worked at Dewsbury um, in a high dependency unit. Then I went to Huddersfield um, Intensive Care Unit. Um, and actually when we moved to Kent six years ago, I remember thinking, oh, I think I'll take A&E and I'll stay a little while. And then I've never left because it is the best place I've ever worked. I love it. So uh, that sounds like you're happy here for now. That's that's really, really great to know. But what, what perhaps might you think, what else might you do in your career? Or have you sort of a, a step that you might like to take? Yeah, so I, I did the nurse practitioner role. Um, and actually, I was really unsure whether ma- the matron role would then be for me. And I kind of went to the William Harvey for a little while before I went back off on maternity last time. And thought, well, I'll go and I'll kind of see how I get on with it. And then when I came back from maternity, I came back to this site with a matron. And actually, I am really enjoying it. I'm enjoying making the changes, getting the department um, with different initiatives and and working along with the acute medical model and the emergency floor. Um, And I'd quite like to continue that. I am enjoying doing the leadership, but I also like the fact I can keep in clinical as well. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, I'm happy as I am for now, but I'm sure I'll I'll enjoy keeping on going with the leadership kind of role because that's what I've enjoyed doing. Last thing, Joe. Um, you, you've actually overseen quite a lot of physical change to this mm-hmm. department um, lately, and, mm-hmm. and it's looking absolutely, you know, fantastic. Yeah. What what kind of differences do you think this will make, particularly as we come out of the, the current COVID spike? I think spike? the positive to take um, from COVID is is the interprofessional working and looking at how can we work better. Um, and I think you know the key of that is is all working together. Mm. So seeing the patients when they come into the any department, are they in the right place? Can we utilise specialities better? Uh, getting the medical model working, quick rapid assessment, uh, early decision making, and moving the patients out to the right area to prevent the overcrowding, the long stays in the A&E department, and to ensure that the quality of nursing care is always there. Mm. Um, and that's been something that we've developed as a team. We've looked at education, where are the gaps in, in learning and development, and that we need to keep that momentum going. We've done a lot more on um, doing WebEx learning, doing filming of videos, utilising other specialities that can teach us and keeping that going that we're all constantly learning to make it a better patient journey. I mean, I think that's probably where I'd want to leave it, you know, end there and leave it there. But for people listening, um, although there have been some tragedies and difficult periods in, in this time of COVID, mm. p- people have been innovative, creative, and I think that sense of 
shared experience and commitment and collaboration is phenomenal and yeah. we do not want to lose that no. we want to we want to be able to keep that so joe on nurses day in the any department at margate thank you very very much for your time thank appreciate you. it thank you